Hello everyone. Today I want to share a case of a serial killer with you. Those who knew him could never imagine that a gentle, quiet, polite, and helpful person could actually be a cold-blooded killer responsible for multiple serial killings. On November 22, 2016, Sarah Butler borrowed her mother's deep blue Dodge SUV and left home, and disappeared since then. Her family searched everywhere but couldn't find her, plunging into extreme panic. Regarding Sarah's disappearance, her family and friends had no idea what had happened. They never considered the possibility of her being harmed, all they wanted was to find her and know where she was. At a loss, Sarah's sister thought to check Sarah's phone and computer for any related calls, messages, and emails. Luckily, she had once accidentally learned and remembered Sarah's social media accounts and passwords. Thus, she was able to log into Sarah's social media platforms and websites as Sarah and browse her interaction history. Soon, she noticed a man named Khalil Wheeler Weaver on the social networking site. The chat records between Sarah and him revealed that on the night Sarah disappeared, she had agreed to his repeated requests for a date and went out with him. Following this clue, she reported to the police station in Montclair, New Jersey, informing the police that the man Sarah went out with on the night she disappeared was named Khalil Wheeler Weaver. The police then started their investigation. First, Sarah's sister, following the same method, left her own dating intentions on the site where Sarah had arranged her date with Khalil Wheeler Weaver, hoping to attract his attention and proposed a specific dating invitation. Then, she and the police in Montclair meticulously planned their meeting with Khalil Wheeler Weaver. On December 8, 2016, Khalil Wheeler Weaver finally appeared. When he issued a date invitation to the passionate young girl, promising her a wonderful time, he didn't realize he was stepping right into the ambush laid by the police. Subsequent investigations revealed that for the 22-year-old Khalil Wheeler Weaver, he was related to multiple cases. By February 2017, Wheeler Weaver was charged with three counts of murder, one of which involved allegations of attempted murder, arson, dismemberment, sexual assault, and kidnapping. In reality, Sarah Butler was not a sex worker. The 20-year-old came from a good background, loved her family, and had her own understanding of sex. Meanwhile, as a college student, she, like her peers, wanted to live independently as an adult not relying on her parents, hoping to earn money to complete her education. She was studying for a law degree at New Jersey University and was going through extreme financial hardship. In her sophomore year, she worked as a lifeguard at the YMCA to help complete her education and obtain a paralegal qualification. However, this part-time job was still not enough to pay her tuition fees. Nonetheless, when Khalil Wheeler Weaver proposed a sexual transaction for $500, she initially refused. However, over the following weeks, they interacted on social media platforms and exchanged emails. Although she was not an open girl, the content of his emails, his friendly online interaction style, and his sincere attitude were somewhat attractive to her. When he repeatedly proposed dates in the name of love and charm, experiencing sexual pleasure with someone she liked seemed nice to her. As for the significance of $500, she probably took it as a reward for love. Thus, on November 22, 2016, Sarah agreed to Wheeler Weaver's date invitation. On her way to the date, she messaged Wheeler Weaver online, saying, Don't be late. She then joked, By the way, you're not a serial killer, right? Of course not, he replied. I'm just a shy guy looking to pursue the opposite sex. For the date, Sarah borrowed her mother's deep blue Dodge SUV. She told her mother that she was going to meet a friend. Mrs. Butler, without a second thought, handed her the car keys and gave her a kiss as a routine farewell and blessing. Little did she know, this was the last time she would see her daughter alive. Ten days later, the vanished Sarah was finally found. Her body was discovered in a shallow grave, covered with leaves, in a natural reserve not far from the popular camping site in the West Orange Reservation in New Jersey. The car Sarah had borrowed from her mother was found in an abandoned building in neighboring Essex County. We cannot blame Sarah for being naive. In fact, any of us could have been deceived by him. 
he was born into a family where many relatives were civil servants working in the judiciary, and he had family members in the police departments of East Orange and Newark. In fact, he had always lived with his uncle, who was a police officer. Growing up in a stable middle-class family in Orange, New Jersey, Khalil Wheeler Weaver had no criminal record. He often attended local church services with his family and worked part-time in a government-initiated housing construction project for victim families. His main job was at G4S Secure Solutions, providing security services for the luxury department store Neiman Marcus in Union Township. Before that, he worked as a security guard at a local hotel. But in 2016, everything changed. He transformed from a just and kind protector into a brutal and evil perpetrator of personal attacks. The first victim of Khalil Wheeler Weaver was 19-year-old personal caregiver Robin West from Philadelphia, who lived in a cheap motel in Union Township. Her body was found in an abandoned room, dead from asphyxiation and burning. The body was so badly damaged that the police could only identify her through dental records. The second victim was Joanne Brown, a 33-year-old divorced prostitute. Her body was found in another abandoned building. She was last seen on October 22, 2016, and was discovered dead on December 5. Like West, poor Joanne also died from asphyxiation. Specifically, Regarding Khalil Wheeler Weaver's third victim, she was fortunate to escape his clutches. On November 15, 2016, a week before Sarah's disappearance, a woman known as T.T. reported that she had been viciously attacked and nearly killed. T.T., 34 years old and several months pregnant, had recently become homeless and relied on sex work to survive. T.T. provided a detailed description. Wheeler Weaver had negotiated a paid sexual transaction with her, and the agreed meeting place was a hotel in Elizabeth, New Jersey. After arriving, he drove her away, claiming he couldn't afford the room fee. Then, they drove to a secluded area. He stopped the car and handed her a beer. T.T. never expected Wheeler Weaver to drug her drink with a date-rape drug. When she became dizzy and confused, he put on a ski mask and taped her mouth with duct tape. Then, he raped her and choked her until she almost lost consciousness. When T.T. woke up, he was about to leave. Somehow, T.T. convinced Wheeler Weaver to take her back. Once at the hotel, she desperately rushed into the room and successfully locked him out. Then, she urgently called 911. However, by the time the police patrol car arrived, Khalil Wheeler Weaver had already disappeared. But at the time, no one connected T.T.'s case with the previous two victims. So, less than a week after the T.T. case, Wheeler Weaver targeted Sarah. The police obtained a search warrant and conducted a thorough search of Wheeler Weaver's home. From his bedroom, the police found three cell phones, two hidden under the bed and one in the closet. The technical investigation team began their work and quickly obtained valuable clues and specific crime information. From the traces left by the internet search engine, they discovered that Wheeler Weaver had searched for the appropriate dosage of date rape drugs on his cell phone. His online searches included how to make a liquid that can kill instantly, and what drugs can be placed on a cloth to immediately knock someone unconscious. He also searched for ways and means to erase online search traces and cell phone communication content. Can you still be tracked if you delete all content and communication processes? While Wheeler Weaver was searching for these issues, he also frequently looked up information on how to become a police officer, such as what are the questions for police entry tests. Using Wheeler Weaver's cell phone location information, cyber police quickly located him at the last known location of Robin West before her death. Witnesses testified that they saw Wheeler Weaver pick her up on the night she disappeared. After West's case, the police in the joint jurisdiction of New Jersey had questioned him. However, the police initially investigated him as a suspect in a typical missing person case. Incredibly, Wheeler Weaver remained calm, admitting that he had spent some time alone with West in his car that night and even directed the police to the location where he had dropped West off. The police later discovered that this location was less than two blocks from where West's burned body was found. There were many similar pieces of information on Wheeler Weaver's phone. 
His phone data clearly showed that he left the area where West got out of the car and returned an hour later to check on the burning building. Many serial killers have a similar penchant for returning to the crime scene to view their achievements, and this was again proven true in Wheeler Weaver's case. In Wheeler Weaver's case, he was gentle, quiet, polite, and helpful, a police officer said. He dressed neatly and was clean. Overall, his appearance was highly deceptive. Typically, FBI agents analyze serial killers from two main aspects, the number of victims more than two, and the methods and means of execution. Through these analyses, they determine whether serial or spree killings have an intrinsic logic and specific patterns. For instance, the well-known case of Robert Rhodes, known as the truck stop killer. As a driver, Rhodes willingly offered rides to hitchhikers, who naturally became his prey delivered right to his doorstep. In Wheeler Weaver's series of murders, his criterion for selecting victims was that each woman was a provider in the sexual transactions he initiated, making them his standard prey. Their disappearances would not raise enough alarm among their family or friends nor attract sufficient police attention. However, with college student Sarah Butler, everything exceeded his expectations. He never anticipated that the situation would turn out completely differently. This instance led to his exposure and ended his career as a serial murderer. After the trial began, Khalil Wheeler Weaver denied all charges against him, claiming he was innocent. His attorney, Dee Dee McMahon, argued that before individually determining Wheeler Weaver's guilt in any of the cases he was involved in, the jury had already unconsciously included a bias towards a guilty verdict upon hearing the criminal evidence from all four cases. It was clear to see that printed materials such as computer search documents, social media messages, email correspondences, and phone call records, spanning over 700 pages, were sufficient to fully reconstruct each crime scene and case Wheeler Weaver was suspected of. Similar evidence collectively showed Wheeler Weaver, as a suspect, had conducted extensive research on how to use date rape drugs and kill others. T.T. voluntarily testified in court. She tearfully accused Wheeler Weaver of initiating the sexual transaction but then attempted to kill her afterward. Fortunately, she managed to escape his control, locked herself in a room, and prevented him from succeeding. Sarah's sister also testified in court. She told the judge that it was she who posted the fake dating intention to lure Wheeler Weaver, which led to the police successfully executing his arrest. Faced with such a vast amount of evidence, the jury easily determined Wheeler Weaver's guilt in all cases. Khalil Wheeler Weaver was responsible for three murders and was sentenced to three life sentences plus an additional 80 years. At the end of the trial, Judge Heifer expressed the court's gratitude to Sarah Butler's family and also thanked the police and the public on their behalf for their persistence in bringing Sarah's killer to justice. Without their bravery and wisdom, he said, it's unknown how many more women might have fallen victim to Khalil Wheeler Weaver. Serial killers won't stop on their own because they need to relieve boredom. Otherwise, it's because they've discovered other methods of crime, he said the defendant in this case would have continued his series of murders. That concludes this case. Thank you everyone and see you in the next video.